Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome to the finale of Let's Play Mystic Arc! Since last time, I've rearranged my party as I have listed in the video description. Namely, I've got the Fire Arc in Deathbringer to help boost my damage a little bit. Got the Wood Arc in the Royal Armor to protect against debuffs and status ailments. And this is the only instance, I think, in the game where a boss has access to both Fire and Ice attack spells so you want the gobs meant for ice resistance fire shield to help out with the fire resistance there and we got the platinum brooch to help out with uh, magic evasion and stuff if you're playing as ramir and you don't have the platinum brooch you may want to go with the star earring instead whatever works for you and let's see with reshine i gave her the power arc because she has a really high power stat to begin with let's see we got the goblin suit infused with the water arc to help with ice resistance but more importantly the goblin suit has 50 percent resistance to fire ice and thunder elemental spells all of which the final boss has you want to have as much of that as you can unfortunately she's the only one who can equip it and there's no headgear or arm gear that she can equip that has additional resistance so we'll just have to hope things work out for her there. And we got the smart anklet to help out with Mantic Evasion, although not that I think that'll become relevant, but might as well. Let's see, we got the Light Arc infused on the Mirror Master to help with damage. Unfortunately, it does not protect against lightning or thunder spells. So if you put it in armor, so that doesn't work. But we do got the Holy Robe. That's got 45% resistance to the big three elements. Not to mention the Gosmet and the Fire Shield that can also help out with that as well. And the Magic Buckle, that just helps boost my damage a little bit there. And we're all set and ready to go. So let's see who the real bad guy is. I've never seen you before. Zemus's Malice? No. No, that's another game, viewers. So, what's your relationship to Darkness? I don't think they ever explain that. My guess is it's kind of like a Aghanim to Ganondorf sort of relationship. Like, Darkness was his alter ego or just a shadow manifestation clone whatever. To do his bidding. Nuts. So that's why you left us alive this whole time. To manipulate us into doing what it is you really wanted us to do. Oh, huh? what's that? For a moment there, I thought they misspelled paradise, but no, I think I got that right there. Nuts. Well, turning everyone into figurines would do the trick. I don't think so, pal. For final boss time! Ah uh ha. -huh. Yeah, if you just use the forbidden symbol or death flare on the final boss, you can one-shot him. <laughs> so, yeah, let's, uh, let's not do that. <laughs> I just wanted to show that off, but yeah, let's fight the guy remotely fairly and let you hear the final boss music a bit. Ah, so epic! <laughs> the intro kind of reminds me of the intro to the final boss theme of Gunya there a bit. But alright, so, first things first, we got the magic mirror on Reshine there, because she doesn't have full resistance to any of the elements there. So that'll, the magic mirror will make her immune to magic damage for the next 10 turns, or 10 rounds, so that's pretty nice. We want to fully buff everyone up with Warcry. Unfortunately, Malice has 90% resistance to all elemental damage, so magic damage, yeah, not going to be so good for us in this fight here. Now, eventually, I also want to buff my speed stat for Felice and Tokyo there, but I want Felice to take the last action in a round, so that way, if we actually do take a bit of damage, 
she'll be able to heal it up before the next round comes up. Now, let's see. Malice, yeah, that's a physical attack there. And I want to keep everyone above 170 HP at all times. Because that attack can hit you for upwards of 170 damage. So you want to watch out for that. Let's see. Okay, so let's keep going with the War Cries then. I wouldn't be too much in a rush to get speed going. It's going to take a while for us to fully buff up the party. Fortunately, Reshine has a really high guard stat, so I don't need to worry about her taking too much damage from that. She might not even take 100 damage sometimes from Malice's physical attack there. But yeah, Fleece is really going to be more of a support character in this fight rather than providing a significant amount of offense. That's one of the really nice things about having three party members instead of two, like the Seventh Saga there. It, you just have so much more of a dynamic than an all-or-nothing sort of thing. I like it. So you could gear your party towards being a physical powerhouse like I do, or you could, you know, gear it more towards magic depending on the situation there. But in this case, yeah, we definitely need the physical attacks for this part. Now, Malice has access to Prominence, Freezing Hell, Blizzard Hole. The nastiest one is Bolt Earth, because we can't do much to resist that one. Let's see, Malice also has access to Stone to petrify you. That's why I've got the Wood Arc on Felice there. And you can also use Draw, which debuffs your power stat. That's why I've got a whole bunch of power potions on Felice. But if you're using Ramir, well, you got the power spell, so you could counteract it that way. And if I get a free turn for Felice, I would like to use speed on herself so she could join in on the fun. How do you even have so much evasion, anyway? I mean, he's got like 200 speed! Holy cow! I want to have at least 211 to use my physical attacks on the guy, but you're rooted to the ground! What are you gonna do? I don't know. Okay, we're fully buffed up. Let's put our kicks to use! Nice. Now, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but it seems like Malice has more than 50% resistance to kick. I have a really hard time getting that thing to hit sometimes, but usually I get at least 40% of the time, but, well, that's not really a good start there, is it? Okay, let's see. One more speed spell. That'll buff up our speed enough there. Yeah, the spell Malice just tried to use was stone on... Tokyo there. That's... Well, when Kick does hit Malice, it'll be a lot of damage. A lot more than Tokyo's doing. Ow. Well, at least he's using his fire spells, not the nastier ones. Magic Mirror is still in effect, so we've got time to get stuff going. Now, since I've got my power stat buffed up to the max, you're better off just using your regular physical attack than uh, using power wave. Of course, that assumes that you can actually hit the guy. Hmm. Kick his accuracy is, I mean, not the greatest, but usually it's not quite this bad for me. Hmm. Ow! Oh! Cow. I think I had you up there at max. If I could get to my magic menu, thank you, I would like to be able to heal you. Yeah, another nice thing about Felice, she's got the cure spell instead of Ramir, who does not. So I can cure petrification if that becomes relevant. Yeah, gotcha. Ha ha! Look at that damage! Maybe not worth it with the accuracy that I've been having today, but, well, it'll help still. Aha! You 
You cannot hit me! Or at least not with your magic. Well, at least I've been getting pretty lucky with Malice not using Bolt Earth on us. Might want to keep an eye on Reshine's HP. And speak of the devil. Ow. Hmm. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to go with the heal spell to get everyone above 170 HP there. But I think we'll be good. MP really shouldn't be a problem for this fight, even just for healing out of Felice there. I'll probably want to uh, heal up Reshine, though, regardless of what happens. Well, fortunately, this is freezing hell, but, and fortunately, let's see, yeah, we've got nearly max resistance on the others there. So I'll just use full health on Reshine and keep an eye on Felice there. But yeah, this guy's got a lot of HP. He's not going to go down pretty quickly. So that's why you need the War Cries, although he doesn't have any healing abilities, so we don't need to worry about that. All right, yeah, now we're starting to see the accuracy. Yeah, Kick is just really streaky like that. Like, sometimes you'll get five in a row, and then you'll hit your next, like, six kicks. Or something ridiculous like that. Yeah, I'm just using full health there, just because, yeah, it's... We were getting behind there on HP. Yeah, you see? Ha-ha! Sometimes I've seen Kick do upwards of like a thousand damage. Sorry. One thousand damage. Gotta use my cheesy game show host announcer voice. As opposed to my normal cheesy over-the-top voice. But, yeah. But alright, we almost got the guy. Wow! Ha-ha-ha! <laughs> You see, I wasn't kidding about the accuracy of this thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Kick relies on speed for its accuracy. Sometimes I felt that like it was, but I think that was just me being paranoid. I'm not worried about that. That is Blizzard Hole. Not really a hole, but okay. Let's see, what are we at? Like, about 50% accuracy now? I think that's like 5 out of 10 kicks or something like that. I have not been counting or keeping track, but... Maybe I shouldn't get cocky here just because I had a few kicks in a row hit the guy. I would not bother maxing out your speed stat. Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm going to have to heal up right now. But yeah, no matter how high your speed stat is, the guy is still probably going to hit you with some stuff. Ha-ha! Go Reshine! You're no god to me, mister! When someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes! Ha-ha. Well, because I'm the one with the sword. Good. Bad. I'm the one with the gun. What's going on? Is it time for the real final boss? Well, who are you? How's it going? Oh, hey, well, it's not really a separate world. It's kind of the same thing, but okay. Oh, okay. So now that we're in the last five minutes of the game, now we're actually going to finally start getting serious. Oh, well, yeah, you are the goddess, so...
Well, thank you. So, what was with Malice, then? Not. Maybe you should have thought about that. Reminds me of Final Fantasy Legend 1, except, uh, yeah, we're not gonna kill God in this one. No, the goddess is not the real bad guy. No, no. That's what I was thinking at first, too, viewers, but now, now it's pretty straightforward. Oh, okay. And stabbing it with a sword. That helps, too. Hmm, kind of reminds me of Soul Blazer a little bit, too. Yeah, I've done so many LPs. They all just kind of blend together after a little while. How much harder could it possibly be? I am what? I'm what? You're not going to tell us, are you? Oh, okay. I'm your child. Well, aren't we all? But, all right. So how are we walking here, anyway? I like the background, though, for the final area and final battle and all that. Let's watch the credits roll and take a look back on our adventure here. For the graphics, I'd give them a 9 out of 10 for a late Super Nintendo era game. Really nice sprite graphics here, just about as good as anything else in the late Super Nintendo era without like the Super FX chip or anything like that. Probably on par, I'd say, with like Final Fantasy VI or... Terranigma, Lufia 2. Looks like Miriam goes back to Machine World for some reason. At least I'm assuming that's Machine World. That's a, the bar at Keepin' Sign, I believe. I don't think there's any other bar that had, like, a staircase on the upper left there. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Shove a lightning bolt up his ass! I heard there was a way, as a Ramir, that you could get into a battle there, like if you ordered milk or something, but I never tried that. I should do another playthrough of Ramir one of these days. Not to LP, just for fun, now that I know more about the game than I do now, or that I did before, even though Felice is just flat out better. And for the music, I'd easily give it a 10 out of 10. So many kick-ass battle themes. Love the dungeon music. The I love all the music in the game. The dungeon battle themes and everything they got. Special boss themes and all that. I guess Reshine's going back to Giant's World with the windmills and all that stuff. I don't know all the worlds where everyone goes back to. But we'll see. Some of them are kind of hard, for, even for me, to remember here. By the way, I'd also like to give very special thanks to Theo and Nitrodon, who greatly helped me with figuring out a lot of the data and information and stuff. I've heard that there's even more stuff that I didn't know about. Uh, what was it? I heard that, like, armor actually has, like, an instant death resistance stat to it that I didn't know about. But, oh well, not much I can do about that now. There's just so many layers to this game. I love it. Let's see, for the plot, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. Just purely on the entertainment value of the plot alone. I mean, the big bad wolf, the wizard of Waz, turning people into figurines, cat pirates, Fruit, people living in fruit houses. Like, what game has that? I just love that. Even though they don't have, like, you know, like, character development or any, a lot of villain presence. But still, it was very entertaining to me. So I loved it. 
Looks like Lux goes back to Machine World, as I would think. Look at all the VVs. Or, I mean, uh, Luxes. Or whatever the pu plural of Lux would be. I don't know. But, okay. And for the gameplay mechanics, I'd also give that a 9 out of 10. Just, I don't think... Well, let's, let me see. This world, I think, is... That might be Children's World. No? No, I don't think so. That might be the fairy tale kingdom with the cowardly lion and all that. I don't know. One of those forests. There's so many of them. But yeah, I mean, this... I have not had a game that had this balanced battle mechanics in a while where you have more characters available than you can use at once and I did not have to force everyone to be useful at one point in time or another. I mean, it just happened this way as I was learning more and more and more out of the game and characters just weren't becoming obsolete. I mean, sure, there, some characters are more useful than others. Reshine doesn't really have a whole lot to her usefulness there. But still, just being able to have everyone be useful Buffs, debuffs, special attacks, commands. Just, I love the idea of learning special commands outside of, like, a job class, like a Final Fantasy V or something like that. And just a lot of the items, the battle items, even those didn't necessarily make characters obsolete either. And of course, Mancia goes back to children's world, I would imagine this is. Although I think they changed the color scheme a bit here. Though it has been a while since I've been here. I love that world. I love all the worlds in this game. I don't know which one would be my favorite. Hmm. Maybe Machine World. Yeah, I'd probably have to go with Machine World, because that one was just so huge with all the... <laughs> I guess they're playing hide-and-seek. But yeah, just so many different dungeons and different problems that we had to find a way to work around and stuff. I like how they had like mini games and stuff too to do things and get certain items and all that. I mean, it's no Lufia or any, Lufia 2 or Zelda, but still, they had a lot of variety to the way you had to progress with the plot. Sometimes the sequence triggers could be a little opaque, but... Yeah, it's still pretty good. So overall, I'd give Mystic Arc a 9 out of 10. This is probably one of the most surprisingly good games that I have played in a while. I just had so much fun trying to figure things out and had other people who were interested in the game. This might have been one of my top 10 LPs to make if I made it before I had the anniversary video. But I loved it. I wish we could have gotten it back in the day. And I hope you enjoyed it too, viewers. Let's see. I think this is... Maybe Soda Hole? In Children's World? Or maybe there was something else. There was another cave area. I thought that was like this. Mm, I can't remember. There's just so many areas in this game. Yeah, this is not a really short game. I mean, my clear time is like something like usually around like 24 hours or so. It's pretty big for a Super Nintendo game. Although a lot of late Super Nintendo games got up there and depth of content and things like that. Oh, and also a uh, special thanks to Aeon Genesis for, well, doing the fan translation of this game so we could actually play it. I've heard there are other translations around, and I've checked out some of them, but I liked this one from what I saw. I didn't test out every translation for the entire game, but, well, I've seen a lot of work done by Aeon Genesis, so I thought this was a good way to keep going with that. So where are we going to go back to? I don't know. 
Well, we're, whatever lies beyond. Am I getting reincarnated? Or am I going into, uh, Yoshi's Island? No. Not again! Not again! No! Stop crying! No. No, that's another game. So I hope you've enjoyed Let's Play Mystic Arc as much as I've had making this LP. I'll be taking a break for, well, quite a while, actually, on side LPs. I've got some other things that I want to focus on, but I will have a main LP coming up again soon. Probably take a couple days off, and then we'll start my next LP. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day, and see you next Let's Play.